Yo, what is going on everyone? Benjamin Nolak here with the Small Mouth Experience and today we have some really cool topics to talk about, a lot to get done. So actually the next two videos today and tomorrow's video are gonna be filmed consecutively, like right now, back to back. So you're gonna see me in the same clothes throughout the entire thing, but today's video should be a lot of fun. Let's put you on the tripod and have a conversation. Okay, boys and girls, so the topic of today's video is something I find extremely, extremely interesting. Now, I had planned to talk about one of these baits in today's video, but last night in Alex's live stream, a question came up that I thought was super intriguing, and that was if you could only choose one hard bait and one soft bait for smallmouth bass all year long, what would it be? Now, this really got me to thinking, because when I think about my lure selection, one thing I've noticed is over the course of years, I've gotten more and more, more complex. I've made things a lot more complicated than they have to be. So I started thinking about versatility. What is a bait that I can fish all year long in a variety of situations and a variety of uh, manners to catch big smallmouth bass? And that really led me to two different baits. So the first one I want to talk about is the hard bait. And this is something you've seen uh, a lot in recent videos that I have posted from last year, but you saw a ton of last spring and that is a lipless crankbait. A lipless crankbait is such a versatile lure and I think the reason for that is its ability to be able to fish along the bottom but also up in the water column. If you only get one hard bait, I would choose a lipless over a traditional crankbait or over a jerk bait because it can be fished so many different ways. Like I said, you can drag it, you can hop it, you can burn it, you can fish it around grass, fish it around rock. There's just so many different ways that you can fish this bait and it catches giant smallmouth everywhere all year long. One of my all time favorite lipless crankbaits is the Bill Lewis Rattle Trap. And I really like this bait for a variety of situations, whether I'm fishing around um, really thick vegetation burning this, or I'm dragging it along the bottom are my two favorite ways. And the reason for that is that flat face on it. Now, if you look at the bill of this bait, you look at the face of this bait, you're gonna notice a lot of the paint is worn off that nose. The reason I like this is because when I'm hopping a bait, when I'm dragging a bait, that nose, because it is squared off and because it is a flat sided squared off bait versus some other baits that have a little bit more rounded sides, it wants to pull through cover like a lipless, or excuse me, like a square bill crankbait. That nose deflects this bait around that cover really well so you don't get hung up, hung up near as much. So when I'm looking for a bait I want to drag, I really like that flat face on a Bill Lewis rattle trap. Also, the flat sides really make it good for ripping out of grass because the edges will break that grass free and cause it to really um, dart off to the side and rip clean from a lot of that grass. Another really good one, and I have a bunch of lipless crankbaits, another really good one that I like is a Strike King Red Eye Shad. You can't really talk about lipless crankbaits without talking about a red eye shad. But one of my favorite colors, the Sexy Shad color, this is just a normal Sexy Shad color. I gotta change out this back hook. Um, has caught me a bunch of big fish, but if I'm fishing clear bodies of water, Lake St. Clair, Lake Huron, and it's sunny out, I really like chrome blue, and you can have these red dots, you don't have to have, have the red dots on there, but you can't beat a chrome blue trap. A chrome blue Strike King Red Eye Shed is an absolutely phenomenal color when you're fishing around cleaner water situations. Not only does it draw fish from a long ways away, it can imitate a variety of different forages and just triggers really big fish to bite. And now typically when I'm fishing a lipless, it's a half ounce to three quarter ounce bait, but I like to go to that three quarter ounce size when I'm dragging a bait, especially in that 10 to 15 foot range. And one of the best baits that I found that my buddy Caleb Bell clued me in on is a Lucky Craft LV500. An LV500 is a three quarter ounce bait, makes a ton of noise, but it has a small profile similar to most half ounce baits on the market. So this is a half ounce red eye shad, this is a three quarter ounce LV500, and they're very similar in size. So you get a heavy profile and a small bait that will catch a lot of big smallmouth. One of the biggest problems I have with smallmouth bass fishing with lipless crankbaits is when you go too big, those fish actually have a hard time getting that bait in their mouth. So using a smaller profile bait will catch you a lot more fish, but also trigger some really big fish to bite. So those are some of my favorites. Another honorable mention would be the Dual Realis um, Vibe or Vibration 68. I have some in the box there. I don't have them out of the box yet, but um, those are really good baits. Really, really small profile bait. Weighs three quarters of an ounce. You can cast it forever away and fish it just like a blade bait. Really thin body profile. Let's talk about the gear that I'm throwing that on. So lipless crankbait. I'm throwing it on a crankbait rod. 
This is a Temple Fork Outfitter 7'4 medium heavy moderate rod. I like a 7'4 because I like to get that bait as far away from the boat as possible. Especially with a reaction style bait, I want to get it away from the boat. If I'm fishing it up in the column, um, I'll be reeling it more so it needs to get away from the boat if I'm dragging it. Again, fishing it in clear water, I want to get it away from the boat. So I like a longer rod. That 7'4 medium heavy allows me to make a really long cast with this thing. And then moderate action, that's important because when you're fishing a bait with treble hooks, a lot of times those fish will gain leverage if you use too heavy of a rod and you'll pull the hooks out of that fish's face. When they come up and shake their head, if your rod's too heavy and you only have one uh, hook pinned into that fish, when he shakes his head, you're gonna pull that hook free and lose a lot more fish. So using a slower action rod is extremely important when you're fishing treble hook baits. Now I'm fishing it on a Lose BB1 Pro 6 4 to 1 reel um, and then 14 pound to 17 pound fluorocarbon line depending on what I'm fishing around. But that's my setup. Nothing too complicated, but again, it goes back to the versatility of this thing. I can drag it, I can hop it, I can fish up in the water column around grass, around rocks. So much versatility in a lipless crankbait that makes it my favorite hard lure for catching giant smallmouth bass. Versatility is important. So this next bait might surprise you guys for soft plastics, but it's something that is just extremely versatile and I can fish a ton of different ways and probably has caught me more smallmouth in the past three years than, than most of the other smallmouth baits that I know of combined. And that is a soft plastic paddle tail swim bait, particularly three and a half inches. That three and a half to 3.8 inch swim bait really imitates a lot of the forage. It's still a small enough size um, where the smallmouth are willing to eat it and it attracts big fish as well as numbers of fish. So this is actually rigged on an underspin hog farmer with hair, custom hair on it. This is from my buddy Caleb Bell. This three and a half inch paddle tail swim bait can be fished so many different ways. And I know a lot of you guys are screaming at your computer like, Dude, I, got a tail. I, got a tail. I get it. But what's so cool about that, that little swim bait is if you put it on a heavier head, if you put it on a 3 8 ounce head, or you put it on a, a half ounce ball head, you can fish it very similarly to the ways you can fish it too. You can drag it, you can hop it, you can also swim it up in the water column. It's called the swim bait for a reason. You can put it on an underspin, you can put it on an A-rig. With a three and a half inch swim bait, you can do so many different things. And it's such a good way to catch fish. The thing about choosing baits that I can use all year long is you need something with that versatility. And so by being able to choose something that you can fish on the bottom, up in the water column, almost on top, you can rig it on a weedless swim bait hook. You can really throw it around pretty much anything and catch smallmouth all year on that bait. My favorite would be Bass Magnet Lure Shifter Shad. This is a Canadian company, so it's really hard to get. Uh, there's a lot of really good soft plastic swim baits on the market. Strike King Rage Swimmer is another really good one, or Kitek Swing Impact Fat. I'm going to use colors that really imitate the forage I'm fishing around. So all-time favorite color is IU from pretty much all of the all of the companies has like that IU color. But what it is, is a greenish back with a white base belly. And it just is a really good color, especially up here in the north, to imitate a variety of different bay fish. And uh, so IU is my all around favorite color. And another thing you want to do when you're storing these soft plastic pedal tail swim baits is keep them in their clamshell packaging. If you don't keep them in clamshells, if you just take them out and try to store them in a box, They'll have bent tails and they won't swim right. So what I was doing there is fixing the tails of some of these baits because I had opened this up just a second ago. So basically match the forage that you're fishing around. I use really good. Electric Shad's really good. This is Bluegill um, for Bass Magnet Shifter Shad, really good. But just a bunch of really good colors that you can throw to catch giant smallmouth bass. The gear that I'm throwing is going to be dependent on the style of head or way that I'm fishing this bait. So I can go into it. This is a Temple Fork Outfitters 736. So it's a seven foot three, six power. It's a heavy rod and a fast action, which it's actually a little bit more moderate fast than a fast. Uh, Lose Tournament Pro G reel, seven five to one. And this is 17 pound fluorocarbon line. I'm using the seven five to one just because uh, I really want to be able to reel down really fast if that fish is coming to me. So it just takes a little bit more control than a slower speed reel where I have to realize that I gotta slow myself down because if I'm reeling it too quick, I'm gonna cost myself some bite. You're gonna really have to match this to the style of bait that you're throwing, right? Like if you're dragging it along the bottom, you're gonna wanna throw you know, a heavier rod, but if you're reeling it up or you're fishing it on a drop shot or, or whatever type of 
technique that you're using that swim bait for, you're gonna have to modify your rod rail line setup. If you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Again, this is my 14 days of quarantine video series that I'm bringing for you guys. So I'll have the next five days with videos down in the comment section below, uh, as well as in the video description for you guys to check out. But let me know if there's something you guys would like to see, just like this video here. Totally impromptu, but I thought it was a cool topic to talk about. Thank you guys for watching. If you're not already, hit subscribe. I'll let you know when I post more videos just like this one here. And as always, take care, tight lines. God bless. Pursue your passion. See you tomorrow.